Okay, let's start another video with the BWV 999 Prelude. Seems to be a trending piece at the moment. In bar 15, just before the long pedal point section, there's this infamous F major 7th chord that requires a pretty significant stretch. And a lot of students struggle with this, even when they have larger hands. It's not about the size. Look, Stephanie is the living proof for this. She manages the stretch even though her hands are a lot smaller than most other guitarist hands. It mostly boils down to technique. Let's watch Mircea Gorgoncha's enlightening tone bass masterclass on this topic. If you want to watch the entire thing, get a tone bass premium subscription. This gives you instant access to this incredible treasure trove of musical knowledge, presented by many of the world's most significant performers, teachers and educators. Links in the video description. I'm here today to talk to you about left hand stretches. This is actually the most requested technical topic on the tone base forums. I was actually a little bit surprised about the fact that this was the most requested topic because I was fortunate enough to learn a couple of tricks about stretches relatively early in life and never really had to worry about them afterwards. So uh, in this lesson, I will try to communicate some of those to you and hopefully you'll find them as helpful as I have over the years. Uh, We're going to be looking at seven examples from various repertoire, some more famous than other, uh, but uh, mostly standard repertoire. And we're going to be analyzing the types of stretches that we regularly encounter in guitar repertoire and how to best approach them. Um, there is a way for us to play complicated stuff using our left hand without having it hurt and without putting a lot of strain on it. There are many ways of achieving distance between the fingers. And there is actually a really, really widespread misconception that can have honestly disastrous results for you. It can lead to actual injury and the inability to play a lot of the music that would otherwise be easily performable. So I want to begin by making this clear because I think that 99% of stretches that we have difficulty with on the guitar are not working because we have lost sight of this one simple fact. If I look at my left hand head on, like this, I might be tempted to believe that the only way to achieve distance between my fingers is by doing this. This is probably what you think of when you think of stretching your hand. But our hand is not built for this kind of movement. This is actually a really, really difficult movement for us to achieve. And therefore, we don't actually have a lot of flexibility here. Even if your fingers are very flexible and very long, you can only do so much. Here is the interesting thing though. If you draw a line between, let's say these two fingers head on, and even with my 26 years of playing the guitar, you know, my hand has been shaped by playing this instrument. If I try to achieve the absolute maximum distance between these two fingers, this is about as far as I can go. This hurts. This is too much for my fingers right now. Okay, so imagine a line going in between those and imagine how long that line is. There is another way of achieving a lot more distance between these fingers. And that is, instead of stretching like this, doing this. Look at the distance between those fingers now. And already by doing this, I am comfortable. The distance between the first and the second finger here is significantly longer than this distance. And yet this hurts and this doesn't. If we take this to an extreme, uh, just folding the fingers into the hand like this creates an incredible distance between the tip of our first finger and the tip of our second finger. You see this distance here? It's almost as big as the distance between one and four when stretching the other way. So we can actually achieve a really, really, really big distance between our fingers by using the folding motion which can happen between any two fingers. Here's the distance between the third and the fourth finger, much bigger than this. Here's the distance between the second and the third, again, much bigger than this. And here's the distance between the first and the second as we've already established. So by folding fingers down and letting others be stretched out, we can accomplish a much, much larger stretch than by attempting to do this. This is dangerous movement that can actually injure ourselves. Uh, it can injure our wrist because we're pushing the wrist out and the uh, actual top part of our hand. But 
folding our fingers away from each other is a way to achieve a much larger distance using a lot less force and without hurting our hands. Now let's jump into the best ways to achieve this on the guitar. The number one misconception that makes us unable to stretch properly is that our left hand is always supposed to be parallel to the fretboard. When we first learn the guitar properly, we are probably told that our fingers need to be completely parallel to the fretboard like this, and that they should never move as much as possible. They should stay in this position. Our palm, the palm of our hand is supposed to be a perfect parallel line to the fretboard, to the bottom side of the fretboard. But if we do this, then we are limited to this kind of stretch always. We can never achieve a different kind of stretch. The way to use the folding of the fingers to create a bigger distance between our fingers is by rotating the wrist and allowing our hand to do this kind of movement. Now, if you were to just play guitar without a stretch and play like this, this would probably be bad technique. You might be able to make it work, but it would probably not be the best way to do this because your hand doesn't have a reason to look like this. But if, say, you want to achieve a, a very big distance between these two fingers, then the much easier way to do so is by starting with a regular position here, and then from here, rotating the wrist. You see what I'm doing is I'm bringing my elbow out, and instead of playing like this, I'm playing like this. Basically, just rotating the palm as if I was turning a knob. And when I am in this position here, suddenly I am able to stretch out this finger like this, bringing the elbow forward, instead of trying to achieve this distance here. There is a way to achieve this and to check that we are doing it properly. And that is to look from the point of view of your standard sitting position and to verify whether the joint that you have here at the tip of your fingers comes to the string from the left of the tip of the finger or from the right of the tip of the finger. So let's, let's go here into the first position where it's really, really obvious. The standard sort of uh, guitar pedagogy position is completely parallel. This joint here is on the left of the finger, of the first finger, but this joint here is on the right of the fourth finger. So basically, our hand is perfectly parallel uh, and the extremities, the two, the two fingers at the ends are each bent sort of the opposite way. That's the standard way of playing the guitar. If you want to achieve the kind of stretch that I've demonstrated now for between fingers one and two, one way to do that is to make sure that the joints at the end of the finger are on the left of the tips of the finger. So instead of the standard position, you are coming from the left, as I call it, and some of my teachers also call it. So if you find it uncomfortable to think of the rotation of the wrist, one way to create basically the same feeling is to just check whether your fingers are coming from the left, whether they are straight on, or whether they're coming from the right. And depending on what kind of stretch we're trying to accomplish, we will need them to be in one position or another. All right, let's look at an example of a passage where this is useful in order to see how we can prepare this kind of attack and also what kind of fingering would benefit from this sort of position. So let's look at an application from standard rep where uh, an extension like this is necessary. And this first piece that I wanna look at is actually quite a difficult piece and that's by design. I am trying to show you an extreme example to begin with so that we can first understand the principle itself and then um, find applications in relatively simpler repertoire. This is one of the most difficult pieces of the seven examples we're going to be looking at today. This excerpt comes from Ocho Valses Poeticos by Enrique Granados. And this particular transcription that I'm playing is the one by Joaquin Clerch. And this is at the end of vals number six, uh, which is one of the latter waltzes. It's the F sharp major section of the, of the waltz. So if you look towards the end of this movement, there is a passage that goes like this. And if we were to play this very slowly, you would see that I did the following. So, 
how did I achieve this stretch? In this passage, you'll notice that I actually had to play F sharp on the sixth string, A on the first string, and then reach all the way to the B for the ornament. That's a big stretch from the second fret to the fifth fret between the fingers one and two. So what are the key elements that allowed me to play this correctly and how did I achieve this? The most important one of them all, as I've already discussed, is I am playing both of these notes from the left, I'm very, very extremely bent from the left. Basically the, the joint of this finger, of the second finger, is really in the fourth fret, almost in the third fret, while the tip of the finger is in the fifth fret, right? So I am very, very much in this position as opposed to this position. And I am basically just doing this. I'm, I'm achieving this distance by, by folding down these three fingers while extending this one to the, to the left. So that's the first aspect that allows me to play this. Now the second thing is that this is really intelligently written. The fingering was created with this extension in mind. So when we play the measure before, what happens is that my hand is already here around fifth position for this note. And I have time to prepare my second finger. My second finger is already in position on the fifth fret where it's going to play the A on top. And from this position, I stretch the first finger out like this. So I am not going first finger first and then to the right. That is more difficult in this case than already being on the right and extending one finger. Whenever you have an extension like this with one finger going way out to the side, it's always easier to start with the core of the hand being in position and then moving one finger away to where it needs to be rather than the opposite. It's, it's kind of like thinking of this finger as a satellite. Uh, the solar system is here, the satellite is way over to the side, start with the core and then extend the finger. That will allow you to make this movement work. Okay, that's the second aspect that allows me to make this, uh, this passage work. And then the fingering, the fingering is crafted in such a way that after I play the, uh, the ornament, I can slide down in the same position to reach the next note. So basically I'm preparing for the stretch by being in position and by having a continuing fingering that allows me to keep the second finger bent to the left. You see, if I were to play this normally like this, the way that you would play these two notes together, um, I would have to get out of that position. But the way that this is uh, created is after I play the stretch, I just basically kind of bring the hand in and the rest is easy. So this is how you achieve a stretch from the second position of the sixth string to the fifth fret on the first string between two fingers, between one and two. One last thing to be aware of in this example is just imagine you are trying to comply with the pedagogical idea that your hand should always be parallel and you are trying to stretch from A to the F sharp. It is absolutely impossible. I mean, maybe your hands are gigantic, but I have pretty large hands and I'm not able to do it at all, no matter how hard I try. One thing I've noticed in multiple decades of teaching is that when a student has trouble with a stretch, it is almost always because they are uncomfortable changing their attack either to this rotation or to this rotation. It is absolutely imperative to be able and not feel weird to, when playing notes from the left, like this, from the left of the tip of the finger, or from the right. 